collection of interviews conducted by El Grupo Elron, a non-profit group dedicated to eradicating false concepts in all fields of knowledge through the teachings of the Ascended Masters of Light, by a medium, Jorge Raul Olguin. December 8, 2000 Messages from Ron L. Who will communicate? I am here with you, again. I am Ruinal, the higher self of who is known in the physical plane as L. Ron Hubbard. How are you, Master? I suppose that you must be quite disappointed with those Scientologists who are in charge of the organizations of Diantics and Scientology that you founded. I say this because in spite of the fact that I have informed them repeatedly about our telepathic communications we have with you, they have refused systematically to be aware of that. In the spiritual plane, with the help of Jonakin, I have learned many more things that are not written in the documents I left when I was incarnated, and it is a pity that we cannot transmit them because not only have they stayed stuck in time, but rather they have closed the doors, they don't want to know anything about new paradigms and then they obstruct the mission. When Siddhartha Gautama, the founder of Buddhism, he created rules, somehow he had to do something that maybe was not good, he had to indoctrinate. Being that in light, all dogma, all doctrine is bad. Siddhartha, who had so few followers had to create certain rules so that his teachings were not dispersed and they were not diluted. In spite of the comparison with Buddhism, I had to do the same thing with Dianetics creating rules, rules of behavior so that they were not dispersed. Today, at the distance, I confirm that certain rules are not right. Buddhism corrected that issue 500 years later. And how many generations had to pass before that happens? I agree and I understand it perfectly, but if I could get rid of those rigid rules, I wonder if there is somebody capable to avoid them also. Most of the human beings, like our brother Jiddu Krishnamurti said, and I mention him because he is a true leader they are conditioned. Then, if they have been taught in that way, maybe even by myself when I was incarnated, how will they be released of those rules? What I want to make clear is that a master sometimes teaches in that way because otherwise they would get out of that routine, and in that moment that routine was necessary because that routine was functional and it is still functional. I agree perfectly with you, master, but I insist, you, inside of those rules, you taught that the tens communicate telepathically. Then, why don't they try to communicate with you, if you taught that and you even had it written? Unfortunately they are very skeptical, but there is one more thing, the current great leaders of the Church of Scientology are arrogant and most of them would not find convenient if the Master Jesus embodied again because they would lose their prominence. In the same way, if the directives that today control Scientology came to the sessions and if they verify the truthfulness of these communications you have with me, they would lose their prominence as representatives of the organization. This is clear, Master. They don't care about the teaching, they are more interested in playing their roles, and the ego they have is the biggest obstacle so that they come and communicate with me in spite of what I left written. Then, they prefer to ignore it. I understood it perfectly. I'll continue with another question that I wanted to ask you for a long time, and it has to do with hypnotism, which is also related to extraterrestrials and abductions. Here we have had two hypnotists like Tony Cambo and another. He is a fraud. And Leo to Sam? He is not a hypnotist, but an animal charmer, nothing more. In the United States there were good hypnotists who performed hypnotic regressions to some people and their cases were well known. I am an enemy of traditional hypnotism, but in the case I am speaking about, when a woman was hypnotized and she was even regressed to a past life, it was even possible to modify her accent. I repeat that whenever a medium channels a spirit, even though the spirit is from another planet or another region, that medium will always speak in his own language, because it is in his language that he is channeling the idea of the Thetan lore spirit, is that clear? Perfectly clear. But in the case of this woman, she was regressed to a previous life, she had an Irish accent, and it is logical, because she was taken to a previous life. In this case, hypnotism was useful. I understand, but you were very drastic when you said, fraud. I myself have experimented as a hypnotist and I know that hypnotism works. Correct, but you have asked me about theatrical people and I repeat that in those two cases, Everything is a fraud and the people who had allegedly been hypnotized by them have been part of the fraud. But some hypnotists have performed acts in stadiums, 
I find it difficult to believe that thousands have been part of the deception. Do not confuse suggestion with hypnotism. Those people were induced, not hypnotized. Which case would be, for example, a suggestion? A suggestion would be, for example, when somebody receives an onion and he or she is influenced to believe that it is an apple or vice versa. I understand. In other cases, there are actors or actresses who take part on the deceit, and they play their roles very convincingly, for example, when they obey the suggestion of the hypnotist and they wake up, they fall in love or they take off their clothes because it is very hot. I understand. And what about the case of Paul McKenna who made several TV documentaries where allegedly he hypnotized many people and he made them behave in a comical way? I believe that the show in fact is called The Hypnotic World of Paul McKenna. He is also a fraud just like Tony Camo. If hypnotism exists, why do they deceive people? The true hypnotism, and I emphasize the word true, goes beyond an ordinary theatrical exhibition. The true hypnotism can be used, in any event, in healing sessions, in regression to past lives, but not to make a TV show. When you see that the hypnotist orders a person, something like, now you will fall deeply asleep and you will wake up when I snap my fingers and you will fall in love with the driver, or something similar, that is not real and it has been arranged. Definitely then. It is only an ordinary deceit. Correct. I can hardly believe that something so coarse is used to deceive the audience. The coarsest things are usually what attracts more. But couldn't Paul McKenna prepare those people hypnotically and perform a serious show? They are theatrical or directly ten shows and it is easier to pay somebody so that he acts as if he were hypnotized. Hypnotism takes a long time, it is not something magic and many people cannot be hypnotized. It is not something easy, it is easier to pay an actor so that he plays the role of a person in hypnotic trance. We should think that real hypnotism exists, because many people can be alleviated of their ailments and even travel to past lives. But what about the engrams that hypnotism implants? Where are they? In these cases, Hypnotism doesn't even create engrams. On the contrary, it eliminates engrams. Let's not be so strict. I learned now, in the plane in which I am and thanks to John Arkin, I learned to tolerate things I didn't tolerate when I was incarnated. Hypnotism is not always the enemy. But Master, even you perform hypnotism? I practiced hypnotism, but not serious hypnotism. Needless to say that by means of hypnotism, even murderers have been programmed. Yes, in some cases, yes. Even you denounced these practices on behalf of some agencies of intelligence of the United States. Now, at the present time, from the plane I am, I know positively that when one programs hypnotically a murderer and if this person has a very charged reactive mind and he she is a very cruel spirit, he she is already predisposed to murder. A person who is in light, no matter how much one wants to program him as a murderer, he will always resist that kind of order and he will never be willing to kill anybody, no matter if there is a hypnotic order on this aspect. I want to make this clear, because otherwise all the people will be afraid of being hypnotized. A person who is in light will continue in light, no matter how much they try to program him, and he will resist the order. According to your explanation, there is no way someone can be put under hypnosis in long distances or sexual commands at a distance. No that is nonsense. Here in Argentina there are some parapsychologists that say they can do it. They are fabrications, as you say. These parapsychologists are the ones who destroy the seriousness of these things. Do they believe in these pseudo-powers or do they know that it is a fraud? Some of them have little light and they believe in these powers. You can label these people yourself if you choose. Well, I would directly call them stupid, or even cretins. Those terms would be correct to brand them. Other terms, perhaps not. What do extraterrestrials do to abduct people? Do they hypnotize them and transport them by normal means as if they were guinea pigs or do they directly dematerialize them and materialize them again in the spaceship? In very few cases they are hypnotized. When they do it, they take them as you say, but in most of the cases they use teleporting machines. Are you telling me simply that they dematerialize them and materialize them in the ship again? Correct. And can they do it easily? 
Of course, if in the planet Earth, with a still developing technology, you are achieving it, how won't aliens do it if they have perhaps an advance in that technique about 200 or 300 years? Well, this is clear. Moving on to another topic, how does the placebo effect work? I mean to a person who has a headache and they give him a sugar pill saying that it is an aspirin and the pain disappears. That is suggestion. By suggestion a human being can even get sick, and by suggestion he can also be cured. Are we speaking about simple things? Correct, we are speaking of headaches, nervous states that have mental origin and similar things. Let's suppose that a person is nervous and a friend tells him, take this pill, it's an anxiolytic, the person takes it, although in fact it is an aspirin or maybe not even this, and the person automatically is alleviated. From our plan we have seen numerous times that a nervous person takes an anxiolytic and 15 seconds later that person feels relieved, when the pill had not even began to make effect, since in the physical plane more time is needed to produce it. I remember I saw in many spy movies where somebody pours some drops or a sleeping pill in someone's drink and after taking it the person is asleep in few minutes. The example is valid and you know that that is impossible. It's important to make clear all these things in order to demystify them. A while ago you mentioned Leo Tusum who without being a great hypnotist, I attribute many things in his favor, because he is a being of light of the plane 4, who has already disincarnated and has demystified many myths. I understand. I watched many of his performances on TV. To conclude, I have a question that doesn't have anything to do with what we have spoken up to now, but I always have it scheduled. We know that each spiritual plane has sub-levels. How do you distinguish them? One cannot look to the higher planes, but one can do it with the inferior planes. But the higher sub-levels can be seen because the sub-levels are not divisions in fact. They are like classrooms in a faculty using a terrestrial simile, only as a basic example to be understood. It would be like going to a meeting in the sub-level 9 if I am in the sub-level 5, and I can do it as an unregistered student and even participate. The sub-levels are for actions of help that one does in the physical plane. It is not about definitive nor marked differences. I understand. I want to make a last reflection through an allegory, because I read in your mind that you wanted to know if the mission you have will have fruits to your labor. I'll give the following example, you have a big tree and a medium size axe, and you wonder if you will have enough life to knock down the tree and build a cottage. Will you achieve it? Won't you achieve it? Your mission is to lumber. The mission is to teach, to give light, to offer service and the success will come as a consequence. Is it something like the result doesn't concern us? In fact, the result does matter because each mission goes after a result, but the goal is the mission and not the result itself. Remember in this sense what the great master Jonathan said, the goal is the quest. The idea is perfectly clear. It is necessary not to worry about achieving the goal, but about walking, because walking is how we will arrive to that goal. You have understood the concept. An embrace to all and I leave all my light with you. See you later, Master, and thank you.